you know. And these, which wouldn't exist in Pro Tools, I guess it would be like a VCA group that you can create in the software of Pro Tools. So basically, here would always like do. Like you take all the drums, go to one. Yeah, I put all my drums on one, and so this isn't actually a, an audio subgroup, it's a VCA subgroup. So what's going to happen is... Uh, and could you then throw, let's say, like a stereo EQ okay. on one, just to so EQ like, the um, drums? Uh, no. No. Because this isn't, there's not actually audio passing through this fader here. It's strictly controlling voltage. the voltage and, and giving of more or less voltage these. to whatever's grouped to one. Gotcha. So, but it lets me, like, see, I can cut whatever's grouped to one from here in the center section. Oh, and I can also it's oh, awesome. Control Dude, I've been level. totally tripping on, like, control every time I want to solo so something in the drums. You use, you have eight groups, and you also have a zero and an independent, but it's best to put, you know, I always put all my drums on one. Andy Wallace, when he mixes, he puts... That's bass. Yeah. Oh, that's bass. That's bass. Let's go to you on bass or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. All right, so then if I come over and he here... he like put all of his kick mics on one, all of his snare stuff and samples and whatever on two, and then three will be his kit. So he uses three for drums. I always just put all my drums on. No, I just didn't so... Um, that's... How did, that oh, always, I didn't set this. That's okay. No, you don't set that. That that You wouldn't set it to itself. Oh, because it's already it on one. Zero. I got yeah. you. Got you. So How did that work when it, you did it? It does a solo in when you're in mix mode or whatever, but this will cut. See? It's cutting everything that's routed to, oh, to so, one right now. But am I, and, not, am I not in mix well, mode? No, when you actually have the computer on and running and stuff. Oh, I got gotcha, you. Generally, gotcha. you don't solo up the groups like that. Uh, it's just... Yeah, yeah, I understand. It seems like it would work that way, but it just does it on this console. And this is also a master level for one. So when I'm mixing... If I, I'll do a, like a drum pass and ride fills and ride cymbals and stuff. Sometimes I'll do room mics and just overheads for cymbals and whatever. But sometimes when a certain drum fill comes, I just want to turn the whole kit up for the fill. So I go into right and just kind of edge it up for the fill and back down and then out of right mode. So that's why these are really valuable. Beautiful. And also as you're building a mix, you know, you might get, a, get your drum mix together and you really like it. And then as you start putting things in, you realize that you're pounding your stereo bus too hard and the whole thing too much. Thing down a little you bit. You keep your drum mix, but you just turn it down a little bit. Gotcha. So that's what that does. So yeah, the, the subgroups are really good. Really handy. So that's it. Now you go make money. That's it, man. <laughs> Parallel compression. So let's uh Here's our drums. Let's just say we want to send our inside kick mic. I'll just choose bus 31 and 32 is how we're going to get to it. Okay. And I'll send uh, our snare drum as well to that. So we'll go 31, 32, we'll kick out. We'll just do all these, these first little bank of drums. So in this uh, parallel compression sort of thing, I would want to not be post fader necessarily because I want to set up my own mix going to the parallel compressor are kind of independent of where these faders are. It's almost like I'm so kind of stays consistent. Yeah, so it stays consistent. It's hitting that compressor the same no matter what. So that's why I'm going to press the input and output knobs and fader level one affect what's being sent to you know the uh, parallel compressor. So this so would be sort of I, the, 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 the mix then, I'm creating. So then let's just say, for instance, we're doing that, mm -hmm. then and then that would affect if I was using like a reverb. Now I've monopolized. Well, that's right. This. Yeah. That's right, you wouldn't want to use the reverb on the same, you know, sand or whatever, no. But I mean, oh, so then you would use this That's so that you wouldn't be using this as your volume. That's right. Okay. That's right. This is one of those things where you just, do, after 30, 40 mixes, you kind of start to realize, well, oh, don't do that this way. That's the thing, every, every guy's, it's just like Pro Tools. I mean, you know, I go, I've been working Pro Tools forever, but I go sit down with somebody else and it's like, you know, they might have been working on it for six months, but I'll see how they do something different. It's like, oh, oh that's, that's kind of cool. cool, you know. I it's, gotcha. like, it's the same with this, you know, everybody's going to work a little different, but you'll figure out what works for you. And uh, so basically, this is, you know, it's coming out 3132, so on the patch bay, we would just take 3132 out. And go into the SSL compressor uh, down here. We could or go into an SSL compressor, or we could say patch into the 1178, and then bring back that up on two other channels here, and, and that's our parallel compressor, you know, right it. there, and squash the hell out of it, and mix it, and just, you know, and mix that, that in with the volume the of the parallel compression. That's right. Okay. That's it. That's easy. Well, yeah. But that's why you would want, you know, to have this input. And right, output. so that if you were bringing this down, not, it would still be hitting at the same. It'd be hitting that compressor the same way. And, gotcha. and actually, I would uh, group the return 
of that compressor to one also, so it would follow that fader in the middle, you know, our VCA master. You would Remember? group that one over there? That's right. I would send it to group, have it... Oh, know, so as you turn up the VCA master of it, the parallel compression goes up and down. The output the of the... return out, of it, yeah. The return of it would go up and down. But oh. it's getting fed the same thing every time. Right, because if you, if you started turning this down and then the parallel compression wasn't attached to it, right. it would start getting squashy as you came down. Well, that's the balance would be... Yeah, the, right. the balance would change. So okay. That's how, and that'd be the same for drums or guitars or anything you want to, you know, gotcha. do that way. But just because you're using the small faders here to go out bus 31 and 32 for that, uh, for the parallel compressor, doesn't mean that you can't use the small fader on, say, the vocal channel to go somewhere else. Right, because they're all you're not going to send it to the drum right, right, compressor. Right. You're going to choose somewhere else for it to go. So you can still use this for whatever you want. So I can, I can use this in either... Either the routing matrix, mm -hmm. which what, what is the, that is, is that D? It's the yellow row. It's the yellow G. That's the routing matrix. And then I've got my auxes. And then, so if I, if I set my aux. So there's plenty of ways to get your signal wherever you need it to go. Right, auxes, we want to mainly use this. We want to use this as our. Yeah, those as are our your auxes, yeah. Auxes, okay. So just because, you know. Channels one through six or whatever are right, using right, right. small faders. It doesn't matter. We can still use these small faders because they don't go anywhere until we tell them where to go, and it's not going to be to the drum. You know, so then, if compressor. I let's say I set these up for whatever these last two, I can't well, see. That's thirty-one and thirty-two. So okay, we let's do it. Yeah, let's do it. Use twenty-seven, twenty-eight. So, so twenty-seven, twenty-eight. Oh, so then if I go like this, then then now that's communicating with that. That's right. So basically, this how would I get? this to communicate with this. Oh, I would go small fader. That's right. Oh, man. <laughs> Anything can go anywhere. That's I got it, I got it. Yeah, 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 and yeah. also this little green light here, uh -huh. uh, it says two routing. Basically, it's saying that this small fader is going to the routing matrix up top. Got it. If we float this channel, see, that's no longer going to the routing. The big, oh, the the big fader is going to the routing now. So now this is not, it's floated from the stereo bus and now it's gonna go up wherever this got is. It. So. That's kind of what that all means. All right. So that'll mute our drums. Yes, solo sir. our drums all at once. Or, or if the drummer's mixing your track. <laughs> and if we had, if we had the parallel compression, uh, we can patch that. Going in and out. If we had the parallel compression going. If we had the par parallel compression going in and out, it would still be running when we turn this down, correct? It'll still be going. That's actually patch it. Okay, so then, but we would set that to just output so that as this came down, the parallel compression would keep the balance with the primary drum sound. Okay. All right. We'll do, uh, do snare top, snare bottom. Let's do both of these. Okay. What are we, 31, 32? Are we 31, 32? Uh, yeah. You gotta hit the far right button on the 1178. Oh, yeah. Okay, so we're going to the far right button. Yeah. You know what else I think I'm going to do? Which this may seem kind of crazy, but I think I want to run like something up here, small line of something that says the number because for some reason I have like major like visual problems and major yeah. like depth perception and my my eye my dad is freaking blind. That's how right. I, like so my vision is very odd and for some reason like when I see this here, when I go up here I can't assimilate the numbers. Right. Big fix. Yeah. So you can pull those faders down. I got you. So you're getting just those right now. So check this out. But we can pull it down the group here. Oh right, right, okay. So I'm gonna pull these down. So that's just, that's the, parallel that's just the pressure. Recurrent. Since that's not grouped to one, it didn't come down. There's that pesky bass player. Get, get rid of that guy. So that's just right, smack 
There's a super slam return. Now these are back. And that's with input and output on. That's right. And that means it's getting sent regardless of where these right. faders are. So then if I was to go like that and just output, if we pull the faders down, we're going to die. It's gone. Yep. So now put the fader down, put the fader all the way down, and then. Yeah. Yep. Oh, man. So listen to what a difference this makes, though. To you. Yeah, it works almost like reverb. Yeah, yeah it makes the decay of your yeah. drums a little longer. Nice. So, yeah. Ryan Williams in the yeah. house. Thank you, man. That's awesome, man. Yeah. All right. So now you can play with all the different compressors and see which one you know you like the best for that. Actually, that's a good one for it though. 1178 is great.